I think today would be a good day to go ahead and install this new gauge that I got for the rat rod. And while I'm at it, I'll need to drain the uh, antifreeze out of the radiator, so I'll go ahead and put the thermostat back in here. I took it out last year before the parade. The car has never shown any sign of wanting to overheat or anything, so I thought, okay, I'll stick it back in now and see how it does with it in there. Uh, I didn't really intend to run it as long as I did without a thermostat, but uh, it's probably a better idea to have one than not. So, if I can remember where I put that thing, and if I can find it, I'll poke it back in there, and we'll see if it runs okay with it, and if so, we'll, we'll just leave it in there. But uh, while I got that off, I'll do a little quick plumbing, and uh, plumb in that temperature gauge, and then we'll go from there. Okay, I got her mounted on here. Check it out. Woohoo! Now what I did was I went ahead and replaced the thermostat in here also. And while I had that thermostat off, I drilled a couple of small holes in it because it's probably in this climate, like a 190 degree thermostat. I don't need this engine to run that hot. And when we used to race, we used to put a washer in there and drill a couple of holes in there and uh, race with those in there. It'll heat the motor up some, but not tremendously. So what that does is it does two things. If that thermostat ever sticks, I'll still have some water flow. Also, it, I'm hoping it'll run, well, it should run a bit cooler than what it would be with the uh, just the thermostat. I only have a, a seven pound uh, pressure cap on this thing because this engine is old, the freeze plugs are old, and I just don't want it under a lot of pressure right now. So anyway, that's what I did. I got the thermostat in there. I got that gauge on there. There's an awful lot of joints to leak here, so I put a little bit of uh, gasket sealer in each joint, and I'm going to let that dry while I work on Trish's uh, other project that I talked about earlier. And uh, so while, that way it'll give that stuff a little time to harden up, which will encourage the joints not to leak when I do crank it up. So with that said, I'm going to get to work on Trish's here. I cranked it up before I realized I didn't reattach the voltage regulator. I got a little bolt on the back of the motor here that holds that in place. Uh, oh, put that right back there. I like working on this old stuff. This is just, this is just my idea of a good time right here. I had a girl back when I was back when I was single and dating, this girl said to me, so what do you do for fun? <laughs> And I said, you know, I work, I work out in the garage, I build things. And she looked at me like I just landed in a spacecraft on another planet. Uh, we, didn't, we didn't hit it off. We, we didn't wind up being a couple. Dang, imagine that. Oh well, these things happen. Not, I guess it's hard, not be hard for uh, some women to understand that a guy likes to hang out in the garage and mess around with greasy old crap. Just imagine. What a concept. Funny baby don't mind, she likes it. You know, she said to me once, she said, well, I always know where you're at. And uh, I, I work with uh, this lady who, uh, her husband builds tractors. And uh, I told her what Honey Baby said, and she said, yep, and I know just what you mean. I feel the same way. If I ever lose track of him, all I gotta do is run the garage. There he is. That works out pretty good. I guess the hard part is just for, find a woman that can put up with, well, I mean, you know, you have to, not every woman can just put up with a man who likes metal, you know what I mean? Uh, they're kind of a special girl for that. I got lucky when I got mine. I sure did. All right, that's enough said. Don't hush now, I get this done. I say that as if I think I'm going to work faster if I stop talking. That ain't going to happen. I must have lost a washer or something because that used to be snug and now it's not.